welcome back everyone to someone Phoenix Ray Ace Attorney. And we are gonna continue Angel Star's testimony. As you should probably guys saw in the last episode, hopefully you guys watched the last episode, or if not, you're gonna be lost in this one. But anyway, Angel Star took to the, the witness stand and is testifying against Chief Prosecutor Lana Sky. And um yeah, we're gonna hopefully finish her testimony today and get to the bottom of exactly what's going on here, especially according to the what Angel Star's uh, witness, and hopefully we'll try to find some holes in the testimony and expose her like the phony that she truly is. But anyway, hope you guys are having an awesome Sunday so far, so without further ado, let's continue on with uh, Angel Star's testimony. After the murder, the suspect attempted to run behind a partition off to his side. I quickly caught her, explained her rights to her, and arrested her on the spot. Ah oh yes, when I arrested her, she mentioned the muffler. I saw it all. She tried to phone on the wall, but had to use her cell phone instead. Ah, uh, let's see. Miles Edgewood, 1712, which would be 5.12 p.m. This is dated the day of the crime. The murder took place three minutes after Edgewood parked his car. If only he held up at a couple extra red lights, he wouldn't have been caught up in this whole affair. Perhaps. It just goes to show you never know what will happen when you let a yellow light. Either that or Edgeworth cut himself peeling an apple. What's Edgeworth doing with a knife like this anyway? Hey! Maybe he spent his weekends buffing it in the wild! Edgeworth? In the wild? I think my fruit peeling theory is more likely. Are you kidding? I always pictured him as an outdoorsman! Now there's a scary thought. A name and ID number are written here. Sergeant Bruce Goodman, ID number 5842189. I wonder why they only use numbers for IDs. What else would they use? Letters, silly! They're the reason we have a written language in the first place! True. Sergeant Bruce Goodman, ID. Y-A-B-A-D-A-B. -A -A <laughs> yabba dab. See? Wouldn't that be much better? Yabba dab? Well, it does have a certain ring to it. Exactly my point, <laughs> Doesn't take much to amuse her. Okay. Chief Prosecutor made to escape it against resistance's fuel. Okay. I'm missing something. I'm not reading this again. The murder, petition off to the side. Hold it. So where is this partition on the floor plans? I'm sure she means this wall next to the car. That's right. There was a wall there, about six feet high. She was obviously trying to hide herself. Quite a natural thing for a criminal to do. And what did you do then? Hold it. You say quickly. Were you close to the suspect? As I just said, I was only 30 feet away from the whole from her the whole time. Hmm. Maybe I should press her for more details. No, I'm not gonna leave her alone. I'm gonna press her. I like to see this on the floor plans just to be safe. The Lunchland car was... 
She was a visitor, thus she was parked in B block. So, you witnessed the murder from here? That would make it about 30 feet from the car, yes. Is that correct, mister? Y yes that's right What? there was a chain link fence in front of you? I went over it, of course. Amazing! The car for queen, lunch lady, athlete, indeed. It would have taken a little time to climb over the fence! So she couldn't have gotten to my sister that fast! Yeah, that fence was about 9 feet high, too. So how did Maskai not get away? Ah yes, when I arrested her, she mentioned the muffler. I saw it all, how she tried the phone on the wall, but had to use her cell instead. She prosecuted me to escape it against resistance is futile. She made to escape? Oh hey there, cat! Can you be more specific? She thrust a shot inside my hand and ran. It was a terrible sight to see, like a dollop of blood on a pate of foie gras. Fo 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 how do you pronounce that? Huh? She even kicked over an oil drum at me. Uh, an oil drum? There was an oil drum lying on its side at the scene of the crime. But, it's strange. Hmm? What's that? If she wanted to escape, why didn't she run the other way? The other... Ah! The parking lot entrance! That, that's right! It doesn't make any sense that she would run from behind the partition to the old germs. Excellent! More mysteries! I wish we could solve a few before finding more, though. So Miss Guy tried to run. I'm sorry my sister is suspicious, Mr. Ray. Not as sorry as I am. Oh yeah, I'm not reading this again. Let's go ahead and save, just in case I screw this up. Okay. Uh... Miss Star, I have to conclude that you have a personal grudge against Miss Lana Sky. Objection! The witness is a former detective. Her testimony is unmarred by personal bias. Well, who would have thought you would be my knight in shining armor, prosecutor? You who, together with my chief prosecutor, kicked me out two years ago. Well, Miss Star, this is a fatal contradiction with your testimony. How do you explain this? <laughs> I don't know what you're talking about. Mess with me, and I'll make you cough it all up. Um, let's look at the floor plans. You said you witnessed a crime from this point. However, that's true. You couldn't possibly have seen Miss Sky making that phone call. I believe you see where I'm getting at. That emergency phone was on the back side of this partition. If indeed you were in B-Block, you couldn't have seen it. But what? What? Order! Order! What is the meaning of this? It's simple, Your Honor. She's not coughing up lunch. She's coughing up lies. Grr. That's quite a claim, Mr. Ray. Perhaps you will allow me a question? Tell us exactly what lie this witness has told the court. Here's where the counterattack begins. I can't afford to get this wrong. The witness lied about what she saw, where she saw it, the order of events. Well, I think logistics is the biggest part of, uh, biggest problem in Angel Star's testimony. So I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna go ahead and say it first. So I'm gonna say where she saw it. Miss Guy tried to use the emergency phone, but it was out of order. What is significant about this fact? Nothing. Therefore, it would be pointless to Miss Star to lie about it. Pointless to lie? I see. Let's say the witness did actually see Miss Sky using the emergency phone. It would mean Mr. Witness to come from a different location. Objection. A different location? Now that's a pointless lie if I ever heard one. Objection. 
Before you call my life pointless, at least let me tell it. Let me ask a qu let me ask a question to a clever wordsman, Mr. Ray. Just where was the witness when she saw the crime? All the testimony we've heard up, up, up until now points in one direction. Let's go ahead and save again. The place from where Mr. witnessed the crime was here. Be here. This is the only place where she could have been. The security guard room? Indeed, the security room in the underground parking lot is well positioned. It's built on the second floor so you can see the entire lot. Hmm, she so would have been able to see the emergency phone from there. But why there? There are many other places where she could have seen the phone. Not in this case, Your Honor. The witness not being part of the prosecutor's office couldn't park an A block. The only place where she could have seen the crime in the back of the petition is here. I remember in your testimony you said you brought a lunch to your boyfriend in the security guard room, yes? Well, mister? How many years have I been getting the better of men? To think that the tables could be turned. Today a man has got the better of Angel Star. Interesting. Order! Order! Witness! What have you done? You used to be a detective. You should know better. I'm not turning back. The guilty will be punished. And I'll do what I must to make sure justice prevails. The guilty? Is she talking about Miss Sky? Um, Mr. Wright, doesn't this strike you as odd? Why did Miss Star lie? It doesn't make any sense. Huh? She could have just said she saw the crime from the security guard station. It wouldn't change anything. Exactly. This photograph tells all. It was the defendant who stabbed the victim. The truth still stands. Objection! It still stands? I disagree, Mr. Edgeworth. But what? If a witness is found to be lying, they're guilty of perjury. She knows this. She wouldn't risk that without a good reason. So tell us what her reason was, Mr. Wright. Huh? M me? Who else? Mr. Wright, let's review what we know! Miss Starr witnessed the crime from the security guard station. But she lied and said she saw it from B-Block. It must make a vital difference, but what? What would change? Review... Difference in lighting... Well, she did say earlier that she witnessed the crime th from 30 feet away. So, I think the difference that it would make would be the distance to the crime. I'm gonna go ahead and save just in case I get this wrong. I'm gonna say distance to the crime. It changes the distance between her and the scene of the crime. Objection! My condolences, Mr. Ray, but one look at the floor plans and it's quite clear. The distance between the scene of the crime and the guard station is 30 feet. I don't see how that would change what she could see. Objection! What she saw is not in question here. What matters is the time it would take her to reach the scene of the crime. Miss Starr, you witnessed the crime from the security guard station. Now, how long did it take you to go from there to the scene of the crime while you arrested Miss Sky? Well, witness? You. Yes? You were the squid wheels, right? Quality of my lunches has gone from low to inevitable. I was bringing a PBJ lunch with my fresh boysenberry jam to my boyfriend. Hmm, boysenberry for the boyfriend. He wasn't in the station, so I waited. I witnessed a crime from the glass walled station. And before I knew what I was doing, I found myself running towards the scene. But, the door was locked. I couldn't open it. What the heck? That's why I had to go through the visitor's parking and B-Block. That's quite a detour. 
probably took me at least five minutes to get to the scene of the crime. Took five minutes? Hmm, this changes things considerably. But, it was that woman over there in the defendant's chair who stabbed him. I knew it. I have photographic evidence. I swear it. I swear it on my finest plastic spork. You have a point, and the spork is a wonderful invention. Would you like another caviar lunch? Absolutely! Uh-oh. Mr. Reed, you have to do something! Do I have any evidence to stop this? Let's go ahead and save again. Five minutes between the witnessing of the murder and the arrest. Think about it. You could make pasta in that amount of time, if you like it al dente. I've got lunch boxes that tie pasta to knots, rookie. A five minute blank. Isn't that strange? Strange? If you were a criminal, what would you do with five minutes, Your Honor? Well, um, I guess I'd flee the scene. Hey, d don't get the wrong idea. I didn't kill anyone. But you have the instincts of a killer. You would run. But this time was different. Miss Guy dawdled at the scene of the crime. She even had her picture taken. No true criminal would act this way. It's inconceivable. Yeah. Yeah. Well then, it seems we come to the end of this testimony. The witness has a grudge against the defendant in the blank of the testimony. Mr. Edgeworth, is the next witness ready to go? Unfortunately, I appear to have overestimated this witness on account of a personal history. We did it! We screwed that can shut, Mr. Wright! Because that was too close. I'm afraid that the cough-up queen has been dethroned. And with that, quarters adjourned. Miss Edgeworth, you ordered the squid rolls, right? That's the one she tried to foist off on me. I prefer to not take the defense team's leftovers. <laughs> Any Anything else to say? I might be able to save you. I have decisive evidence. What was that? Is this another one of her trick lunchboxes? My apologies, but we have no further questions to ask of you, Miss Starr. Ah. Is this your jumbo lunchbox? Woohoo! A triple decker! Out of deference to the witness's determination, I'll allow one more testimony. Oh, great. Let's hear about this decisive evidence. Like the lunch lady land, la yeah, like the lunch land motto says, you won't be disappointed. What's she gonna pull out of a lunchbox this time? Witness testimony, decisive evidence. I should have mentioned those five minutes when I wasn't looking at the crime scene. And now, to the matter of the victim's shoe. Did I not bring this up? Two types of blood were found on the shoe. One was, of course, the victim's. And the other blood type matched that of the defendant, Miss Lana Skye. This shoe proves it. It's flawless, decisive evidence. What? There was blonde blood found on that shoe? Try Lunchland for all your lunch and decisive evidence needs. Witness, what's the meaning of this? Why is this the first time I've heard of this evidence? Simple, as I've already said. I don't trust you with evidence, Mr. Edgeworth. That's why I took the liberty of investigating this myself. And, you had blood tests performed? Didn't I mention? I have three boyfriends in forensics. In any case, Your Honor, I can't accept this as evidence. What? You must know the two rules of evidence law. Rule 1. No evidence shall be shown without the approval of the police department. In other words, this shoe is illegal evidence, at least for the time being. Hey, is that right, Mr. Wright? It seems so. Edgeworth sure is celebrating. Not so fast, Mr. Edgeworth. Don't forget, I used to be a detective. As I mentioned previously, 
This shoe has already been tested by a member of the forensics department. As you can see, it was approved by the police department as of today. Even the general public can produce official evidence, Mr. Edgeworth. No. Ugh. Is it right, Mr. Ray? It seems so. Edgeworth is looking pretty solemn. We could at least study some evidence law! Really? Prosecution complaints notwithstanding. It appears that this evidence satisfies the first rule of evidence law. However, it seems you have yet another count against you, witness. Anything to ensure that the guilty are properly judged. Victim shoe added the court record. Oh, I didn't get to read that. Oops. Very well, Mr. Wake, you may cross-examine the witness. I forgot to read that. I usually read what's on the court record before I get off, but... Anyway? Okay, decisive evidence. Should have mentioned in five minutes. Pick and choose, then bring it up. Two types of blood were found. The other blood type next to the defendant. The shoe proves it. It's flawless, decisive. Hold it! You can't let this evidence go through without a fight. You ordered the peppered fish guts, right? Some like it hot, Mr. Ray. Some like your client. Season enough hot water to make a whole vat of soup. Mr. Ray! Do you or don't you have a problem with the shoe? A problem? This is critical. Is there a problem with the shoe? As a matter of fact, there is a problem with the shoe. If I'm not imagining things, I say there is one critical problem with this evidence. A clear contradiction. That gleam in your eyes. You're still young, rookie. I'd give you a peppered fish gut now, but you couldn't take the heat, could you? Uh, maybe I can. Let's hear what Mr. Ray has to say. What is the contradictory about the victim's shoe? Show us the problem with this, this evidence. Okay. How about this? I wonder if you noticed. There's blood on the bottom of the shoe. Don't mess with me, rookie. Or it'll be your blood on the bottom of my shoe. Okay, that's a threat. Hmm. Indeed, there is quite a bit of blood on the bottom of the shoe. It makes sense. The victim was stabbed with a knife. What could possibly be contradictory about blood on the bottom of the shoe? Well, before I get to that, let's see the write-up on the bloody shoe. White enamel shoe that bears traces of blood from Goodman and Lana Sky. Oh, hey there, Queen Bean. Okay. Take that! The problem lies in the footprint. The footprint? Note that the bottom of the victim's shoe is covered in blood. Then, isn't it strange? Why weren't there any bloody footprints found by the scene of the crime? Aha! Uh -huh. As you can see, there were no traces of any such footprints at the scene of the crime. That contradicts your claim about this shoe. Objection. This picture only shows part of the floor, so there could have been bloody footprints. Objection. Then where are they, Mr. Edgeworth? Because we checked the scene and found nothing of the sort. Order! 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 Well, witness? What? I, I, uh... Great going, Mr. Ray, but... It's true that the lack of a footprint is a contradiction. But then we have to ask why there wasn't a footprint. Oh. That's true. There has to be a reason why there wasn't a footprint. Think, Mr. Ray! Think! Hey, I don't know why it's not there. I'm just good at finding contradictions. What? I see. I see. Now I get it. Get what? Our witness is more devious than I gave her credit for. We were hoodwinked to the very end. But she slipped. There is one vital hint of the truth in her, best, uh, in her testimony. Well, what are you talking about? Think back to when she told us about apprehending the suspect. The chief prosecutor tried to resist, but her efforts were in vain. She knocked my hands aside, kicked over an oil drum. 
Oh, she's beautiful but deadly. A predator, this one. A leopard woman. Right. I thought that was a strange thing for the normally cool-headed chief to do. No kidding. Now, witness, allow me to ask a very simple question. This oil drum, was it empty? Oh, that. Hmm? I'm not sure I like your attitude, Mr. Edgeworth. Though apparently you're not the slowest conveyor belt in a lunchbox factory. Witness, w well, was the oil drum empty? The oil drum kicked over by the chief prosecutor was brimming with water. Wa water? What does that mean? Still don't get it, Mr. Wright? Do you want to know the reason she knocked it over? The real reason? Aha! Uh -huh. You don't mean... Yes, the suspect knocked over that oil drum for one reason and one reason alone. To erase the bloodstains that would become evidence against her. But why? Dang. That ties things up quite nicely. The bloodstains left in the victim's shoes tie her quite uh, tie her quite clearly to this murder. Then, after the deed was done, she knocked over her oil drum to erase the telltale signs. Why, that's a prosecutor's specialty, erasing evidence. That reminds me, Miss Sky's right hand was hurt. Didn't she say she cut herself when she stabbed him? So that's when my sister's blood got on the shoe? Well, I see no reason to prolong this trial. But Mr. Wright, do something! Please! But what? What can I do? Your sister has confessed to the crime and she tried to conceal it. But, but... Enough. There is no need for, to, for further debate. The verdict, your honor. Very well. But Angel Stir is on the prosecution side! She could have been lying about the water! This court finds a defendant, Miss Lana Skye. Little girl, what did you just say? Huh? But me? Did you say that I, Angel Star, was on the prosecution side? Whoa, well, well, yeah, you were! You said my sister had evidence by raising the bloody footprints! Well? I thought you had your fill, but here you are demanding a second helping. Another lunchbox. A lunchbox called evidence. Well, wait, witness, don't tell me of something else. The time for deliberations has passed. Any further comments and you will be held in contempt of court. Your threats don't scare the cough up, Queen. Look at this. A photograph? I had it just in case anyone had the gall to suggest that the white shoe didn't belong to the victim. Hmm, I see no room for error in this evidence. But Mr. Ray, wait! Look at the ass for this photo! Hey, it's clearly wet. Erasing the last trace of doubt from the court's mind. Immediately after the murder, the crime scene was washed with water. I I'm sorry, Mr. Ray. I guess I... I couldn't help after all. That's not your fault. I knew I couldn't win this case from the beginning. And it seems this is what your sister wanted anyway. I'm sorry, Mia. Right. What or not? Don't be so quick to throw in the towel. Get yourself up off the asphalt. Take another good look. Don't give up. Not until the bitter end. This is the last piece of evidence. Very well. This time I'd love to declare a verdict for good. Objection! Your Honor, wait. What is it with you people? Can't I hand down my verdicts of peace anymore? Whatever it is, can it wait? No, it can't. Then it will be too late. Look at this photograph. The last one submitted. This trial wasn't over until we give every piece of evidence proper consideration. So, right. Are you saying there's a problem with this latest piece of evidence? Yeah. I'll think later. 
Yeah, there's a problem. Right or wrong, I've, I've got to go ahead with this. I suppose as we come this far, we should give every claim a fair sake. Very well, Mr. Wright. Show the court the problem in this photograph. I forgot to save. The big problem in this photograph is here. The problem in this photograph is here. What's this? There's something poking out of the car's muffler. Wait just a moment, Mr. Edgeworth. Your Honor? You just said muffler. However, I see no trace of a muffler or scarf of any kind in this photograph. A muffler is also part on a car or motorcycle, Your Honor. Just think of it as part of the exhaust system. A pipe. I see, and... I see! What's this suspicious looking cloth sticking out of the car's muffler? <laughs> so what if there is something sticking out of the muffler? What does that have to do with this case? Nothing. Absolutely nothing. You sure about that? Objection! Sorry, mister. But it's not going to be that easy. In fact, you've already told us why this is important to the case. You said as much in your testimony. What? what? Let's hear what Mr. Wright has on his mind. Now let's see. Tell us why you think this piece of cloth and muffler is related to the case. Well, if you guys remember correctly, whenever Angel started to uh, testify before, she claimed that she overheard the word muffler during a phone call that was made on this cell phone, so I'm gonna prevent, I'm gonna present this cell phone. Mister, recall your testimony from the, for for the court. Ah, yes. When I arrested her, she mentioned the muffler. That's what had me confused in my earlier testimony. Muffler. Ah. Yeah. Could it be that the muffler you heard mentioned? Was it actually this exhaust pipe? If so, that means this piece of cloth is vital evidence. Oh, woo! Well, it seems we will have to suspend the proceedings. S suspend? I found myself wondering about that piece of cloth. If we leave any question unanswered here, we do a disservice to the law. Have the car at the crime scene inspected at once and bring me that cloth. The better to wait till after we've seen all the evidence. Agreed? I suppose so. Whew! That was close. But, we made it. At least for now. This, this court will adjourn for a 30 minute recess. It's lunchtime after all. He's still hungry? And that is the conclusion of Angel Star's testimony, and we will end things off here. We'll continue things off here on next, it should be, not next, but this Saturday coming up, which, like I said, I'll be uploading this every weekend until we end this. So next time I'll see you guys, we'll be on Saturday, and we will get court back in session after 30 minute recess but uh hope you guys are enjoying the series as i am doing this case but uh thank you guys so much for watching this and i will see you guys again next time